very interesting stuff. Uh, if I go and I refresh this stuff, and it's not the only case. There's many other cases I noticed that, well, she was, for one thing, her parents were involved in MK Ultra since, wow, man, since who knows when, right? So, um, once I went under her profile and I saw her, you know, I saw her under, I think it was on a Yahoo, and I follow up to that stuff. Uh, and it might not be the same person, I'm not sure, because this, this is different, you know. Um, this is the Nina that was really involved in MKUltra. And uh, let me see if there's any music here or something. No music. Um, for instance, this is the father. This is her father. Uh, and I, I suppose that this is she. That this thing is she, you know. Uh, it goes so, so, so far back in time. You know what this is here, based on what I see here? This is really not her home. This is her dacha. Um, this is like a weekend house they have out of the city where they would go for vacation. So I, I remember when he built this place here, this dacha by himself entirely. I remember a psychiatrist being hooked up so he would go for a visit and uh, she probably doesn't know any of that stuff and she thinks that her parents were just angels or something like that. It's not true. I'm saying this because she was the one who requested from Zuckerberg to block me from having the ability to message her. Now the situation uh, developed. I'm not blaming her parents for that issue. Situation, I'm not even saying that her parents are bad or anything like this, but situation really, really became um, sharp, like in 2009. <clears throat> Uh, 2000, sometimes in 2009, 2010, I think she actually even finished, I don't know what was in 2006, I'm thinking about, actually, maybe this thing could actually even help me out a little bit, this stuff here, hold on, this one here, because I feel that this goes like to year, you know, like 98, you know what I mean, like 98. 97. And uh, when I consider all that stuff, um, yeah, 2000, and uh, I said earlier, 2000, and uh, I didn't say this year 2006, and uh, 2006 would be six, and uh, uh, let's say 3255 uh, doesn't make any any fucking sense. Not the whole a lot of it. Um, not sure really whether she finished a university degree in 2009. I'm not precise sure, but I know there was a lot of fuss about my not liking her and stuff like that. No. I don't really know what developed. Uh, her father attempted one more time to do some bad stuff, actually to torture. It was like vendetta. And it was the Ukrainian government that immediately corrected him. It was verboten. Uh, the answer to him was 9-9. That means no more money for torture in that sense. So that kind of a saved me back then and maybe even saved some more. Um, I think, but I'm not sure about it. I'm not really sure about it. I can't say that. I'm not really sure about it. I'm not going to say any of the stuff that I don't know for sure. Um, I, I, actually, I would say that I, I think I get a very, very strong feeling about it. That she's got an older brother. I would say that. Um, uh, 
Uh, this is a Parvoshki here. This this is not from them. This is from the neighbors. This is in the city. That's a different story. That's in the city. Uh, let me see what else here. All right, beautiful dogs are beautiful. Okay. Um, I'm saying that uh, it doesn't make any sense that I would not like her saying that too. I did a lot of stuff. Had a very different views during MK Ultra. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I even that's why I'm filming this. Maybe I even insulted her or something. Maybe I I was inappropriate or something like that because it was it was sharp in 2009, 2010. It was very bad. Uh, you know this girl Lyudmila from Ukraine, who met me at Denbach near Warsaw when I applied for political asylum in 2018. She very, very, very much looked like a you, Nina. Uh, and so, you know, requesting this kind of issue here that I, I, I came over here to message you and those kind of issues is just, um, I don't remember what am I supposed to do next with this? Uh, but all right, let this be high. So just a little reminder so that you know that I do remember you. Zuckerberg, however, with this type of culture, which is like a gang culture. It's really, really inappropriate. This is like, actually you would, you would have somebody completely isolated, which is frequently done with the victims of trafficking and uh, you know those kind of issues. When even if they would get lucky enough to request assistance from police, it would be oftentimes that the traffickers would offer them police assistance just to discourage them from pursuing any kind of way out of these rings. Um, I, I think this culture like this, to do stuff like this online is extremely, extremely inappropriate. Um, I am gonna use this as evidence, definitely. It doesn't matter for who, against whom. This is like a gangster culture. And I actually remember when you and Ina requested this from Zuckerberg personally, inside of this house. And so I know this stuff because I do have another profile here, which is this one here. And you can see that you do have this kind of option, like message option. And I never ever contacted you before in my lifetime. It never was that I would contact you. We never had any kind of contact through the Facebook or anything like this. Um, so, you know, this is so, uh, how can I say? Uh, I, I just hope it's going to be healing from this point of view. But for me, I am going to have to use this for the core purposes because um, you're not the only one Zuckerberg have gladly accommodated. Uh, it was the U.S. government that would suggest people that were involved, this kind of special features, you know, accessible to them against me because I was such a problematic person. When in reality, we all know the one who cooked this stuff really was a US government more than anyone else, together with their British royals, or I should say their owners from London. Uh, it will be expensive for the Zuckerberg. Like I said, not the only person, many others the same way, and I am just going to tell to Zuckerberg something. You don't actually have the right to provide social network for anybody based on what I recorded right now. Just because of one example, because you are displaying a gang, a gangster type of attitude. You're not going to get passed through here with this one. You got you're, you found the wrong person, buddy. Soon you're going to get invitation to the court. Your type of this type of gangster attitude ended up blocking me from any kind of revenue 
online and I'm not complying with any form of genocide, any form of extermination like this. Uh, it was used for the psychiatric purposes, eventually to even hospitalize me in 2012, blocking me view, video view counters, going all the way to blocking me video view counters to discredit me in front of people. It wasn't even about income anymore. It was just about basically to set me apart, to label me as good as dead. And I'm here to let you know, buddy, your company is going to go for cents. I would actually even thank Nina for this. This is nice. I like it. I like it. Hey, man, if you are for uh, a contact, you can drop me in a mail message. And, you know, I will gladly respond to that. Um, all right. So we're going to go and I'm going to demonstrate you basically how this stuff can be messaged eventually even. Uh, it's basically how this stuff is done like this. Since who knows when, right? So, uh, uh, she does have, I think, two brothers that are both older than she is. If those are not brothers, then they're cousins, whatever the case might be. I don't know. They were both fairly blonde. Um, and um, the thing about it is, when I think about, yeah, in 2009, 2010, she must have finished high school and then she <clears throat> that I could actually be even wrong about it I'm not sure because it was US government something she had it toward the city I know in 2010 in finally like in 2010 2011 2011 is when she was ready for like employment but I actually even anticipated in 2011, she was thinking about moving to the city, something like this in that sense, because the second house that I demonstrated you on her profile, it's like it's in a suburb of some city. Um, and so in 2000, and I think it was like 2000, and definitely 2011, 2012, this U.S. government officials with whom she actually even began to interact because of involvement in this case, they started to offer her opportunities and so on, employment opportunities. And I was like sidelined like a dummy, like a stupid guy. They saw me like some dumbo, you know, like somebody who just passed in life, basically, drugged up, just dumb ass guy, that stupid guy that, that actually needs to be treated like an animal. Yeah, yeah. I felt that American officials, top government officials, they viewed me like an animal, like somebody who actually wants to be treated like an animal. Now we're talking about all this apparatchiks that were involved in it that would be coming to our house and would be meeting here with the people or they would get to meet me anywhere in other parts of the world, wherever they would hijack me. I don't, you know, I would have to have pictures of all these people. And unfortunately, I have not done a good job over the course of years. So that I would give you particular, I could go and point you out the names, people that, um, you know, 
the thing is, I don't have a particular, in particular, I don't have a particular good opinion about these people when it comes to U.S. government officials. Now, is this going to ever open this thing, or is it going to be next year, or what is it going to be now? Let's see if I can get two messages. Um, it's taking a hell of a lot of time. Um, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a memory. I don't know what it is. Oh, there you go. That's a message right there. It's coming through. Um, sometimes in 2000 and 2000 and what is it? 2000 and 2000 and really 2012. 2013, U.S. government actually even started to pressure her about work opportunities, about life opportunities in general. Um, like I said, I mean, well, I, I, I definitely wish her the best, and I, I definitely wish Ukraine the best. Um, but this is not the way you do things in life, you know. I I see United States of America and Ukraine as two countries that they found one another and they're going to be just, I think, work-wise, cooperation-wise, they're going to be fine. But I'm going to say to you what, don't fucking come here anymore to this place. You know, that's why I was going to show you a messenger here. And it just doesn't want to open somehow right now, does it? So that you understand how things are here. <laughs> is it the internet? Is it the computer? Is it what is it? I don't know. It's hard to know what it is because everything is so functional. The US government made sure about it. Together with the cancer issues so that I would experience maximum results so unfortunately i have to say it looks like i'm not capable to even open a fucking messenger from facebook like you see it right there maybe i should just do it this way oh, 100 is this To know the U.S. government, that means that you had to participate in my case. To be close to me, whoever you are, from wherever you are, and you got to see how they treat person, how they treat people. And I was involved in this since I was one year of age. And guess what? The, this stuff, I'm going to have to stop recording because I think it's consuming um, a lot of memory or something like that. Let me see this. It's like a really comedy stuff. It's a comedy stuff. Microsoft Edge, look at that. Um, but nothing other than that, really, that would suggest me that... See if maybe we can get now things going for this video. Yeah, folks, this is this is the way. This is the way this stuff is. Yeah, I think that I might actually even have a shot now. I think it was like a problem with the memory or something like that. No, it's not going to work. Well, I'm going to have to stop recording and then open and then record the whole thing. 
so that I can get that message. All right, so I restarted the telephone and we can do it again. In very, very short, uh, the telephone, uh, computer, of course. In very, very short, let's see this. No, it's not going to do it like that. Okay. So it's going to do it like this. There we go. In very, very, very short. In very, very short, this. This here is what defines me. Just remember. When you're gonna think about me, if you have a second thoughts about it, all you gotta do is this stuff here. Look, I'm gonna share this with you. This will really give me some opportunity to to make sense out of this messenger. So that, you know, you you get to read this. You understand? You get to read this stuff. Look, now, I got this link here from Jay Leno. mentioned me in a comment i left him a comment three weeks ago and today he actually from his page really he doesn't have on his page it's a different case it's a different case on his page he doesn't have or or maybe he does have i don't know i didn't bother with it let me see if i can message one or not no you don't so um what they do is they do some promotions and it was on his page it appeared. Let me see what what else what what do we have here? Oh there you go. Um oh there you go. I don't know what it is, but that's my comment right here. This was like three weeks ago. And he followed up with me today and he left me a message, which was actually really kind of him. Not really, according to MK Ultra scenario. Uh, just as I later reminded him. Um, well, it, what he would do is he would send me a, a direct link so that I could contact him. And what these people do is they are basically looking to... He was involved in Mount Everest of torture next to what you're about to read and so what they, they they try to vindicate themselves they try to find um or maybe even not that i have no idea what because at times i got impression that it was the conscience that started to eat him because of everything that went on he did have a problem with it in a way because he suggested that on the side, he suggested that he didn't feel good about it and he wanted to help me out with all this and so on. Well, you know, the thing is that this never was about help. Today, I, I, I converse with him and this, this here, is, this is what defined our conversation. I started to look about Jay, uh, Jay Lano. Jay Lano was involved like since I was like four years old, maybe younger, you know. And so th th this is the conversation because it doesn't concern only Jay Leno. It, it concerns, let's say, somebody like Bill Clinton, and it concerns Richard Nixon. Yeah, he also was a visitor. Um, it concerns like top U.S. politicians. It concerns certain period in the United States that defined United States deeply. And so, you know, I had no idea really that, that he was involved that far. Because he made me feel like with his MK Ultra issues, he made me feel like just like, like another uh, person that was out there that was just taking advantage to financially help himself out and was doing its best to keep me away as far as possible. There was very unpleasant issues involved in it. Uh, and for the most part, that's what I would do. There was people that really knew how to play this MK Ultra to the such degree that would deter you away from even taking 
branch to try to analyze, try to see if they were involved in your case or whatever, you know? And so today it took a little extra time to see go over his photos and I saw a few of them, including with a video that I posted both uh, from 78. Um, and I knew immediately who he was, and I pulled some memories out, some just to remind him of um, what really defined our friendship, if you want to call this friendship. Now, guys, I want to be straight with you. I don't want you to think that I am still, because most of the most of my life, you know, most of my life, I didn't even have myself. I don't think I had anybody. And one of the things I have to tell you, the way this shit, the way they enforce this stuff is, people whom they target, they don't even have themselves. That's how bad this stuff is. This stuff is so violent that you as a person, as a human being, you completely lose your identity, struggle, knowledge about what you are in this world for. This is how intense, this is how bestial this stuff is. And so I somewhat gained my conscience, human conscience, and I took today the opportunity to remind him also about who he was, who Bill Clinton was, who these politicians really were in my life. I don't appreciate, I don't appreciate, and I don't welcome any of these politicians back in my life, anywhere near me. I will pursue criminal code against you. I will press criminal charges against you. Because just as I explained over there, it's the only logical, rational thing for me to do. I don't think I dealt with the people. Bill Clinton and this guy, this is like a, like a little, like a little brotherhood. And they claimed me all that, that I'm one of them and so on. And, uh, no matter what and no matter what. You know, the thing is, I am definitely not one of you. I, you definitely did not see me as one of you. Uh, our relationship strictly is defined in this conversation here between me and all of you, because I know you, you share these messages. But I, I'm going to take a step further, and I'm going to share them with the world so that the world can understand, see, itself in me understand my point of view the point of view i'm trying to make because you always presented me as somebody really as mentally disadvantaged person even when you the moment that you that you that you learn that you gain conscience that you did you acknowledge yourself did you acknowledge um you know did you acknowledge yourself as a human being it's the moment that feels like you no longer are alone in it in this stuff in this struggle to stay alive to survive somehow that's definitely when God is on your side. That's definitely when you no longer are by yourself and you definitely don't need anybody anymore because you're on the right track. This MK Ultra crime of mine is about the worst crime in the history of the humankind. You don't know what it means to be abused. You don't know what it means to be three, four, five years six, seven years of age and have entire class, 10, 20 kids going after you every day, physically confronting you. 
and sometimes it happened to me even in entire school you don't know what it means to stay alive you people don't have no fucking idea how far these people have gone to deprive me from my sanity and eventually threw me into the psychiatric hospital after four years of torture there is nothing in common between us there is nothing there is no link there is absolutely nothing you only existed in my life to deprive me of completely of absolutely of entire sanity you london british royals you only existed in my life to keep me deprived of my sanity the only thing that kept you in a lie that you wanted to be seen in which is you know playing a wise guy playing a smart guy playing a rich guy playing somebody who exclusively have the right to torture and human trafficking and stuff like this the only thing that kept you was really mount everest of violence against me the ultimate ways paved literally after i wouldn't even say completion of the school because of the stuff you did to me during the school and stuff like that somebody like me could have 10 universities and i was so exhausted when i finished that secondary and i beat that secondary against all fucking odds in this world my friends from the school and the friends that they knew me told me so much violence that you have made it through we don't actually even believe that you that you managed to do this that you managed to accomplish this nobody could possibly believe this stuff what you did to me is atrocity truly is atrocity and the only thing the only thing that separated you from the status that you search for that you create for uh, in front of me so that not that yeah also that you could see yourself through in other people's eyes so that you can get this corruption going really was ultimate violence unprecedented violence world of force unemployment and I'm going to say silent psychiatry. Psychiatry was present since my childhood, but even what turned out to be <laughs> you labeling me as mentally ill. I mean, unfucking believable. And you're not even, even so, with all knowledge and everything that you have and degrees that you have, you don't fucking reach up to my knees, even in every sense, not in physical, not in mental, anyhow. And you, you did, you you pushed all the way like this i don't have anything to say thank you for i was not worried of anything i was not worried at the end is the way these people do you're not worried of anything this is like a prostitute you're like a prostitute and when they no longer need you they fucking destroy you they rip you apart in pieces it's a procedure it's a, it's like it's like very very harsh uh psychological and cardiovascular cancerous procedure they destroy you in absolutely every sense they destroy you they turn you what i don't know i don't imagine actually what I, What you get to hear from me and see from me, it's actually a miracle because for that matter too you have to be exceptional to stay alive to have ability for your body basically to sustain so many injuries so much torture that you withstand this type of and listen i'm not i'm not i'm not calling for something i'm not suffering from any anything i'm fine i'm okay i read the news today about the ukrainian uh soldiers military suffering post-traumatic stress disorder guys the only thing i would say to you is when you go to war it's just 
half of the job, you know? If you somehow made it alive out of the war, that's actually three quarters of the job. If you happen so that you're traumatized or you're injured or whatever the case might be that, that it happened to you during the war time, during your service, you have to understand one thing that, and nobody explained anybody when they go in a, in a service in a military. Um, that other quarter, the completion of the job, that's actually the part that is the hardest one. That actually applies to your maintaining yourself well enough to continue to drive through your life. And maybe with the time, the wounds, everything is going to heal to you and you're going to be all right. But, you know, whoever goes into the war, every one of us, every person will suffer wounds. There is nobody that would be windproof. There is nobody that would be that there's no person like this that can withstand withstand um, such issues. Nobody can withstand that. So that that last quarter, that's like the job that it's very important that you don't you don't go and withdraw yourself into your world, watch TV and keep yourself away from people, um, live in your own world, don't fucking do that, get out, um, whatever the fuck you do out there, it's good to be in a social letter, or do whatever the fuck you like, but do it, if you go fishing, whatever it is that you do, do it because you want to do it, you know? Uh, live your life is what I'm trying to say. Don't go and feel sorry for yourself. That's why I, I feel it's important to stress this because there might be like a certain degree of this. And it doesn't apply only to veterans. It applies to everybody. Whoever is watching this shit, everybody goes through a lot in life. But the bottom line here is what I stated. It's always that quarter. Uh, without that quarter, the job is just not done. Whatever it is you do in life, you have to make sure that you continue uh, positively. Maybe at times I feel that I even stress too many maybe mentally related issues that pertain to this case. And maybe that's the only mistake that I have done it. But I really did this so that people can understand what you know, I had dealt with, with whom I dealt with, what kind of people, basically, I dealt with. These people have no conscience. That last quarter is very, very important, that you continue to live, that you continue to take care of yourself. Exercise. The main part in your life, whoever it is that you are watching this program, remember, is to exercise. And the best for you to exercise is in the mornings. That's basically when you wake up, when you get up, you're fresh. Uh, especially if you're an older person, especially if you are suffering from some kind of depression or some kind of issues. In the morning time, you should invest, the first thing you should do, you should invest that into the walking, into exercise. Because most of us, leave exercise and such issues for the last and in reality these issues are the most important to take care uh and consequently what happens is it's one day it's two it's three four you know and those days collect themselves atop of one another uh, and it's it, it becomes very difficult and more and more depressing to make it up for the lost time for the lost days so if you do exercise in the morning, that's already guaranteed that the next day you're going to be in a good shape, in a good condition. For whatever work you're going to take on, absolutely. And if there's like no emergency work, if there's nothing that you have to fulfill, for another day that you start again successfully with the exercise. 
the most successful thing in the day when you start is a healthy food, good food, and absolutely exercise. Walking is a prime exercise for you. Um, this is basically how you start. You should start like every day. It doesn't matter what background, what how, and this and that. Take care of yourself, whoever you are. Whoever you're watching these videos of mine, take care of yourself.